Arsenal have a new injury concern to one of their starters, but just how bad is it? Meanwhile, Joshua Kimmich has been linked to a move with Arsenal. We're going to talk about that, as well as more images and positive signs surrounding Jurian Timber. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time. Thank you as always for making this a part of your morning routines. It is incredibly appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic start to your week so far and that Monday treated you very, very well indeed. It certainly did me. Um, it was a very busy day yesterday. It was one of those where you get to the end of your shift, you sit back on the sofa and think, oh. It's the end of the day. I'm hoping today might be a little bit more chill. I like being busy. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not the type to to not want anything to do. Has hence why I've taken up every single 8 a.m. slot for the last two to three years. Um, but yeah, just one of those evenings where you're like, oh, that was a that was a challenging one. Um, but uh, certainly very very happy and energized to get through today and uh, in through the rest of the international break, of course, as well. Good morning to those joining us live in the chat box. Thank you so much, as always, for doing so. Pika Who, Glenn, Carlton, Damien, Blackshine, Jackie, Mark, Mr. Reed, Darren, Louis, James, Ismail, Martin, Franklin, Shari, Pam, Vivian, Stephen, Amira, Matt G, Dave, Carl, Jalali, Martin, uh, Kish, uh, Stevie, Tom, Josh. Thank you so much to all of you and more that continue to tune in every single day is hugely appreciated. And thank you to those of you that continue to like the video and help us on our way to hitting 1K every single day. We did it once again yesterday as you continue to surprise, shock, and make me feel very warm and fluffy inside. So thank you for that. Um, let's jump into today's stories. We kick off with more of a rounded um, look at football and more of a rounded footballing news story. And that is, of course, the news that Nottingham Forest have now been deducted four points following the investigation surrounding their alleged, at the time, breach of profit and sustainability regulations. They have been obviously found guilty and have been docked those four points for breaking or rather breaching those rules. Uh, on the BBC website, it says an independent commission found forest losses to 22-23 breached the threshold of £61 million by 34.5 million the immediate loss of points means they blew uh, they dropped below Luton Town of course in the Premier League they're only one point now or rather they are one point rather than just one point because they were three points better off but they're one point behind Luton now uh in what is shaping up to be a very very interesting um kind of situation at the bottom of the table Nottingham Forest has said that they will appeal um this uh this deduction we saw Everton see their penalty reduced from 10 to six points after a semi-successful appeal. Uh, a club statement said after months of engagement with the Premier League and exceptional cooperation throughout, this was unexpected and has harmed the trust and confidence we had in the Premier League. Forest are the second top flight team to be penalised for PSR breaches after Everton lost 10 points in November, which was reduced to six, as I say, as an appeal. Um, the City Ground Club, who are likely to appeal the ruling, had a hearing on the 7th to the 8th of March. Now, many of you may say, well, what about... What about Manchester City? Well, of course, Manchester City's investigation continues. Their court date, according to the Mail, has been set for late autumn, um, and we won't get a result of that likely until 2025. Um, so for those asking about Man City, you're going to have to keep being a little bit patient. We're not expected to get any movement on that uh, for quite some time yet still. But Nottingham Forest and Everton have indeed docked. Uh, points already this season in a first for the Premier League. Moving to more Arsenal specifics and uh, Brian Okonkwo has joined Isthmian Is 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 it's a tough word to say the Isthmian Premier League side Chess Hunt on loan for the rest of the season. Of course the brother of Arthur Okonkwo who's currently with Wrexham on loan at the moment um, but uh, we wish uh, Brian the best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, meanwhile, Arsenal have continued to train, of course, at London Colney, and they're not alone either because we've spotted the Brazilian national side doing some training sessions, of course, as well at London Colney. Edu was spotted speaking with uh, members of the Brazilian staff. Of course, he used to work for the Brazilian national side, so there's links there and uh, clearly some really good relationships being built between Arsenal and that Brazilian national team. But uh, yes, Arsenal's um, 
players that have not gone on international duty continue to train. And we've spotted Durian Timber still very much involved in training, which is a really positive sign. And hopefully we see him back on the field and potentially getting some minutes very soon indeed. However, Arsenal will now have zero Brazilian representation in their friendly against England this Saturday, of which I am going to be working in an attendance for. I was kind of looking forward to seeing potentially three Arsenal players on the Brazilian side. And now it's dropped in the space of a few weeks to zero. Gabriel Martinelli, of course, misses out with that cut that he suffered against Sheffield United. Gabriel Jesus was not called up yet because, of course, he returned from injury and hasn't had too many minutes and so wasn't selected. And Gabriel Magalhaes has now withdrawn from the Brazilian squad with an injury. Now, I did some chasing up of this story yesterday. I was basically told to chill on this, to not be too concerned about it, that there's still plenty of time between now and the game against Manchester City and that it is more precautionary than anything else was, was the guidance um, that I was kind of given on this topic. So I wouldn't panic for those of you that were panicking about this. I would just kind of just stay alert, stay aware. We can wait for some proper updates from Arteta, of course, next week when he faces the press ahead of the game against Manchester City. But the fears are quite minimal, um, is, is basically what the feeling I've been given. So, yes, uh, this hopefully will not be too bad, if at all, and maybe even still see him available for that game against Manchester City, which I think we can all agree he certainly needs to be. Now, our headline and final and transfer story of the day comes from Florian Pletterberg, who suggests that Joshua Kimmich is potentially on the way out of Bayern Munich this summer. The Germany international has been linked with a number of clubs and Arsenal are said to be amongst the clubs that he would be open to moving to. And not only that, but of course would also um, have interest from Arsenal are said to have uh, a level of, of keenness in Joshua Kimmich. The question mark is of course, from our perspective, are you keen? on Joshua Kimmich. He's just turned 29. He did so in February. I mean, I remember Joshua Kimmich bursting onto the scene with Bayern Munich, having, of course, come through uh, at the Stuttgart Youth Academy, moving to Leipzig, um, and then, of course, on loan. Oh, was it loan? I think it might have been. Or maybe it was even just kind of a, a temporary transfer in which he was bought back, and then he was sold through to to Bayern Munich all the way back in, in 2015, when he was only around 20 years of age. So, Yes, he's a player of immense talent, immense versatility, can play right back, can play DM, can play centre mid. Um, he doesn't necessarily fit the age profile that Arsenal tends to go for. But what I would say with Arsenal having such a young squad, would it be one of those players that, because he's got such immense quality, that they come in and kind of add some really key experience to the group? We've got a very young defence, it's worth pointing out as well. But also, I'm not sure where he would play. I mean, he's not going to get in, in front of Ben White. He's potentially not going to get in front of Yuri and Timber either. If we bring in a defensive midfielder, is he going to get in above them? Is he going to play above Declan Rice? Probably not. So it's a difficult one. I think if we brought in him, it would certainly be an experienced signing and one that would add plenty of depth to both the defensive midfield and the right-back position. Um, but I think there'll be fans questioning why Joshua Kimmich, and especially when it comes to how much money it might take for Joshua Kimmich to uh, to be signed for. He only has one year left remaining on his current contract at Bayern, so you wouldn't expect it to be too expensive of a deal, especially player of his age as well. Very intriguing indeed. We always kind of rule these things out, like when we signed Jorginho, for instance, for 12 million quid. And yet, I mean, look at the impact that Jorginho has had in just a year and a half of signing. I don't think anyone would take that signing back. So should we be so dismissive of a player like Kimmich who can bring experience to different positions on the field, especially with Thomas Partey potentially moving on in the summer as well. If there's not the clear and outstanding defensive midfielder that Arsenal want, is it a good move to get Kimmich in in the short term? I think this might split the, the fans. I'll probably set up a uh, a poll for the second part of the show so you can have your say on whether or not you would sign Joshua Kimmich on a short-term deal in the summer. Uh, speaking of which, of course, we'll go to part two shortly, but there is something that will cost a lot less than Joshua Kimmich, and that is a ticket to win a signed and framed William Saliba shirt, of course, which you can do by going to the link down in today's video description. Uh, there's lots of instant win prizes still available for this shirt, of course, that you could indeed win. All the details, as I say, are on the Football Prizes website. There's around 100 tickets left. A lot went yesterday, um, so don't miss out on your chances. There's a week remaining on the prize and uh, I wish absolutely every single one of you the best of luck in the world if you are indeed 
going for it. Right, let's go to part two and we'll go for that poll and get some of your thoughts on Joshua Kimmich and more of your questions too right after this. Okay, part two. We're going to throw this poll into the chat box now. So would you sign Kimmich is the question. He's 29 years of age. I'm not going to tell you like price tags or anything like that because we don't know. Um, so we're kind of doing a little bit of context, I suppose. He's got one year left on his deal, of course. So you wouldn't expect it to be loads of money. Um, but just think about it. So would you sign Kimmich? 29 years of age, yes or no? The poll has gone live in the chat box. And we'll keep updating you on as to its progress and how people are swaying. If you're listening on Catch Up, of course, you can't do the poll, but you can let us know in the comments section down below. So please do that. And if you haven't dropped a like on the video either, I'd really appreciate it if you could, as we could reach that 1,000 like threshold once again in this amazing run that we've been able to do our run to boost ourselves, to continue to try and, you know, in some ways help Arsenal. Uh, I've always said that I feel like if this the commitment that you guys show is showing being shown on the field as well by Arsenal. So let's uh, let's drop a like on the video. Uh, Practica says, if Arteta wants Kimmich, so be it. The manager has earned the right from me to sign players without me uh, opting uh, or rather kind of uh, looking at the other side. And I think this is a really interesting point of view that I think a lot of fans now absolutely kind of lean towards. And I do as well. If I have reservations about a player, if I have criticisms of a player, if I have reservations about a player and questions, etc., but Arteta wants the player, who am I to question that now? The recruitment of Arsenal has been excellent. It has led us into successive title challenges and returned to the Champions League and to the quarterfinals for the first time in 14 years. Who are we to question who Arsenal are signing right now? Because the input and the output of players has been absolutely astonishing. I mean, look at the idiocies that we saw spoken about Kai Havertz. Some of the awful words that were spoken by some about Kai Havertz when he signed. He's made them look very, very silly now. And so therefore, who are we, of course, to be um, judgmental in so many ways about that? But people can still have an opinion. But I think when it comes to whether or not Arsenal do the deal, at that point, you've got to kind of put a lot of faith in the reasons behind Arsenal looking to sign them. Adam says, I'm really surprised that you guys wouldn't consider Kimmich. He has leadership qualities, a very good player on the ball and would bring a lot to the team. I actually spoke to our good friend of the show and a longtime panellist and uh, friend of mine, of course, Drew, yesterday. He texted me um, about Joshua Kimmich and we had a good conversation about him. I'm sure he won't mind me reading out some of his, uh, his his takes. He says, what are your thoughts on Kimmich, Tom? I'm quietly begging for it to happen. I'm not sure it will, because if Pep wants him, we'll probably go to City. I assume he'd be the only one to potentially push Partey out, and then we'd have Kimmich at six with Rice and Martin Erdegaard. But Kimmich remains a very good right back too. Better than White, but I still think White would go into the season starting in that row on form of a new deal and, of course, the form that he's been showing. I don't think we end up with Kimmich, but if Pletterberg is correct... Um, that we're in one of the clubs that he'd consider. It's nice to just be in the conversation because he is elite. So some really very high praise from Drew there about Joshua Kimmich. And it's because he is a very, very good player. Um, he's world-class in terms of his ability. And I think we've seen, as I mentioned already, the Jorginho signing showed us that we shouldn't necessarily be too averse to these types of kind of interesting deals. I'm not talking about signing a striker for 80 odd million quid that's 28, 29 years of age. I'm talking about bringing in a player on a short-term deal on a lower fee that can add some real quality to the team like we did, of course, as I say, with Jorginho. Uh, Dan, Dan Granger, the chat says, we've been looking at Zubamendi, so it seems clear Rice might be preferred as potentially an eight. Kimmich would be a world-class at the base alongside it. However, I'd prefer Musiala from Bayern, if available, of course, a very different player, an attacking player, but a very good player, that is for sure. Thierry says you have to sell either Erdegaard Saka, Declan Rice or William Saliba for 200 million. Who's leaving for you? Uh, I guess you have to talk about the player that's the most replaceable of the group between Erdegaard Saka, Declan Rice or William Saliba for 200 million pounds. Um, ooh, that's a tough one. It's a really tough one. I mean, I'm not selling Erdegaard, not a chance. Um, Declan Rice is obviously fantastic. Tax Saka, you can't sell. William Saliba as well. Is, is it weird that I'm leaning towards Declan Rice out of the four? Um, I guess because he's been here the least. Um, I guess because 
Saka and Erdegaard and William Saliba. I think it's between Saka and... Sorry, I think it's between Rice and Saliba uh, in terms of a 200 million pound. And the reason why I say Saliba is because he's the only player in that group as well who I couldn't tell you I know is going to be here forever. Erdegaard, I can see being here until the end of his career and not worrying about it. Saka... I can see being here until the end of his career without a problem. Declan Rice, having signed as a 24-year-old, I can see being here. But Saliba, of course, signed that contract through until, what, 2027? And I just feel like I just know that in the pathway, in the career trajectory of Saliba, I feel like Real Madrid is is just there. And I feel like one day Saliba will leave in his mid-20s and go somewhere else. He's the one I'm least confident about being at Arsenal for the long term. And so I think that makes me lean towards Saliba out of those four being sold. I hope he really proves me wrong. Um, but I hope that that method makes sense in coming to that answer. I just think that, um, yeah, I think I just think it makes the most sense to pick Saliba out of those four because of that reason beyond anything. But obviously, I hope that they all stay. Um, let's go to JD says we could lose two or more midfielders this summer. Kimmich and another midfielder would be quality to bring in. Carl says, Tom, we need more. Uh, one of your favorite words, context on the poll. It's not a straight yes or no. And I have voted. I I'm afraid I'm not going to give you any more context. That is the poll. That is your choice. That is what you've got to go for. And at the moment, um, more than 250 of you have voted and 65% of you are saying yes. 35% of you are saying no. So people leaning towards more of a yes, it seems at the moment with Joshua Kimmich, which I'm not surprised about because he is a world-class elite level player. Um, Guns of Yellow Room says, oh, Tom, waking up to hear you say this isn't the best feeling. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, John says, I would want the Chili Pepper to have an experience in another country after we win every single cup. Uh, that's, that's nice of you, uh, John, to want to, to see Sackus spread his wings uh, in some ways after winning everything with Arsenal. Uh, Ajmel says, uh, hi, Tom, if City beat us next game, do you think that we should focus on our Champions League games considering City have Spurs when the big six left to play in the league? Ajmel, my answer to that is we should be focusing on both. Um, I think you can focus on both. I think we've got the squad for both. I'm not focusing on one or the other. I think Arsenal should be going to try and win both the Champions League and the Premier League this season. Uh, Mark says, who is our best available Partey replacement? If, in fact, he's going this summer, Kimmich, Zubamendi, Brandt. I mean, Brandt's not a DM. Uh, Yusuf Afana, or would you go for uh, Amadou, Anana, Palinha, or Douglas Louise? Um, it's a good question, Mark, because obviously the, it's not an obvious candidate just immediately to replace um, Thomas Partey. Zubamendi looks to me like a younger version of a Jorginho type. Uh, Joshua Kimmich, of course, is already that kind of ready-made player to bring in. So you're not uh, having someone uh, kind of have to develop into the role necessarily. So that could work in the short term. And then you just keep doing that. You keep bringing in those types of players. Arsenal need to find their own Rodri at the end of the day. They need to find their own young version of, of Rodri. And I'm not sure that player exists necessarily at the moment. Um, so do you go for the short-term option like Kimmich until you can find that amazing player? Maybe that is the right path for that. Um, Ishan says, Tom, would you send Vieira and Smith Rowe on loan to another club for six months? I mean, they can't go on loan now, uh, not to any club that, of course, they would be getting any meaningful experience. And I think that maybe in the summer, there's question marks over Vieira and Smith Rowe and their role in the team and what they might you know, where they sit and whether they'll move on. But uh, yeah, there's no chance of a uh, uh, of a loan at this moment in, at this moment in time. Uh, Joey says, Balogun, where's he now? How's he doing? Uh, it's fair to say that no one has been talking about following Balogun. No one has been saying that Arsenal made the wrong decision in selling him. He's got five goals and four assists, which is decent, you know, this season. Five goals and four assists in 21 games for Monaco. He's been kind of in and out of the starting lineup, more so in than out, but he's playing alongside the likes of Wissam, Ben Yedda, etc. But he didn't start their most recent game in their 2-2 draw with Lorient. He did start the previous four games before that, but there was a period before he had that shoulder injury where he was kind of, you know, starting some games on the bench for other games as they try and balance the options Monaco have up top. But I don't think anyone has I don't think anyone has really regretted Arsenal selling in Balogun for a very, very good fee uh, during that summer transfer. I tried telling people that I thought about 30 to 35 million was a good deal. 
Got a lot of stick for it, but again, feeling quite justified in that now. Um, Mark says, do you see Sambi Laconga or Charlie Patino playing a role when they return? I definitely think there's scope for Sambi way more than there is for Charlie Patino. I think Patino will probably leave on a permanent deal in the summer. But yeah, there's definitely scope for uh, Sambi Laconga to to potentially return to the club because I think he's had a really impressive loan deal at Luton Town. Uh, Akash says, we should buy Kimmich as he adds experience. Uh, is a good number eight, like Frankie de Jong, um, potentially, as another option. Uh, Jeffrey says, hi, Tom, would you prefer between Boniface, uh, Tony or Goyokarez? Uh, it's clear Goyokarez between those three. I don't think there's too much debate in that. Uh, Jackie says, Tom, with our fixtures coming thick and fast, would you start players like Vieira and Smithrow against the likes of Luton? to keep the match ready. I would be getting them plenty more minutes and I would be rotating in these midweek fixtures like we have against Luton Town. So yes, Jackie, I think you're absolutely right. I think we need to make some rotating options between players, bring in Jesus in, bring in Tommy Asu in, bring in Smith Rowe in, bring in Vieira in, bring in Zinchenko in, bring in Timber in, bring in Partey in. There's loads of options we've got now. We've got to try and use them to the best of our ability. You can't bring them all in. I think you can only make one or two tweaks per game to different positions. Um, but yes, we should be making some changes to the team moving forward. Uh, Mark says, Hi, Tom. Uh, the worst mistake we have been making is dropping from competitions. We need to take everything. We need to give our best, both in the UEFA and the Premier League. Dropping from one minimises any hopes. I agree. What I would say, though, is not necessarily a mistake losing to Liverpool in the FA Cup. It's not a mistake losing to Manchester City in the FA Cup. Yes, the League Cup has been disappointing. I, for one, am not too scrutinising of our League Cup form. It's a cup that you know, has really lost its edge and its shine. But the FA Cup is certainly something I care about plenty and understand that losing to, um, you know, losing to those types of teams like Liverpool and Man City, you can certainly reason with that. Clive says, I don't think Kimmich is better than Wyatt as a right back. I watched the Bayern Lazio game. Musiala is the one, however. Well, Clive, our Bundesliga expert, Drew, would, would disagree with you. But I think that he also agrees that right now, even if we were to sign to Kimmich, um, he wouldn't necessarily start because of the contract and the form of, of White being that good. But certainly the experience of Kimmich coming in as maybe a deeper midfielder and a, a number six option for us when you've got Kimmich, Rice and Erdegaard, that's an amazing midfield three that you could use. But Musiala is certainly the one. I just don't know whether or not we could go and get him. I'd love to see it. I just don't know whether it's going to be possible. Uh, Miller says Kimmich is older and expensive. I don't know how expensive he is. He's only got one year left on his contract, Miller. So I don't know how expensive Kimmich would even be. Um, so yeah, it's difficult to know with that one. Uh, Practica says, Tom, forward target, Santi Jimenez from final, 22 years old, Mexican, 21 goals and 25 matches this season. What if we thought about that? We talked about him a lot in the first half of the season as his form was very good. Uh, I certainly think he's someone that's to keep an eye on. I just don't think he's as accomplished as a player like Goyokarez. And if you're going to have to spend, you know, a big, big fee on, on Jimenez, which Feyenoord would ask for, they know the talent that they've got on their hands. They would ask for another big fee. I think Gorokarez for me is, is, the, is the one still. 50 goal contributions this season. Stunning levels. Really shown some good technical ability as well as a centre forward. And links play really well, which we need from our centre forward too. Uh, Tim says, definitely think we should sell Nketiah, Nelson, Tierney, Elneny and bring back Lekonga. I mean, we're not going to be selling Elneny. He's going to be leaving on a free in the summer. I most, I most expect that to happen. And Ketia and Nelson, though, Tierney for sure should all be sold. And we look to, to try and... And, and make as much money on those players as we can. I mean, if you are Nelson, if you are in Ketu, if you are Tierney, you should be looking to be moving on permanently in the summer to find a place where you can get some regular game time week in, week out. That is for sure. Uh, Lai says, Tom, I believe the Champions League progression and winning the Premier League will be closely linked as they can provide mutual momentum as well. You're absolutely right. I think it's really good to be able to push yourselves forward in both competitions to give you something of a springboard in those competitions. Uh, there's over a 1,000 of you watching. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, as always. Uh, if you haven't yet dropped your like on the video, please do. And I have noticed in recent weeks there's plenty of you listening in on social media, on X, on Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to get involved in our chat box and you're wondering how I'm reading up all these comments, if you jump onto your YouTube app and you go and type in the Guna Talk, find the show, that's how you can get involved in our YouTube conversation as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you tune in on YouTube every morning rather than listening on, on Twitter. It's great to see you on Twitter, but please do get involved in YouTube. I'm just going to plug in the laptop because... I'm a moron and didn't do it earlier. Um, Fuad says, I saw Baka uh, Bakayoko, uh, I assume this is the PSV winger, was linked to Liverpool yesterday. I think he'd be the perfect competitor for Sack on the right-hand side. Neto, I'd love. I just can't trust his fitness. And that's the big question about Pedro Neto. You can't 
trust his fitness. AFC Cape Town says, I think Alan Varela is a good option to replace Partey. Aggressive and good on the ball, so it gets involved with goals and assists more than other CDMs. I think after that Porto game, especially the one in the drag out, he earned a lot of plaudits for his performance. Um, but are Arsenal going to be playing like that? Is the question. Are Arsenal going to be getting the best from Varela as that type of player after they kind of dominated the game? Arsenal are going to, not necessarily going to be dominated in most of their games. I've not seen enough of him in when Porto are playing more, you know, explosively, um, exuberantly. So I can't necessarily have too much of a view on, on Varela from that point of view. But he was very good defensively in that game. Uh, Mark says, what's your thinking on the progress of Chido Obi-Martin? I know it's still early, but do you think he or Mika Bireth might elevate to the first team? Look, Chido Obi-Martin is, what, 16 years of age? We get very, very... Like, he's not going to be 17 till November, so that means he hasn't even signed a pro contract yet. We get very attached to young players we hype up these young players we get excited about these young players very very quickly I, we we need to be patient with them brf is a different option he's you know he's over the age of 20 now he's playing european football for Sturm Graz. he's doing very very well scored another couple of goals at the weekend so he's certainly someone that could be looked at in the summer in pre-season i don't necessarily think that there's enough yet to prove that he'll be making it in the Arsenal first team. But certainly, he's proving enough to get Arsenal a decent figure if they were to try and sell him in the summer. They were against selling him last summer, when, or rather in January, when Sturmgratz wanted to try and add a, an option to buy into the deal. And I think they're being proven right. Um, but what it looks to be regarding a player like um, Chido Obi Martin is that the same with some of our young players. You've got to give them... You've got to give them time. You've got to give them patience. You don't want to rush them. You want to give them those necessary steps. If you can get them alone when they're old enough to go on loan, which would be when they're 17, when they've signed that pro deal, you know, you can get them that experience on loan if you want to. Um, but yeah, and Hulk and Dino Playtime says, opinions on Mario Koja Dubri. Of course, his contract situation continues to be something of a continues to be something of a point of contention because his deal runs out in the summer. There's been no real movement yet on that, um, about him signing a new deal. It looks most likely that he'll probably leave on a free. He's not got the opportunities. He's played some games on the bench. This is where Arteta can be better. I, th I think we all agree that Arteta can be slightly better when it comes to using some of the young players. I was in Maurizio Pochettino's press conference the other day. He I don't know if you've seen the bit where he kind of picks up. I'm sure I've got a program around it somewhere. Um, so many of them lying around now I can't find one. Any over here? Oh, I can use the... Uh... I'll use this. The Arsenal... It's a terrible example, but the Arsenal-Fulham game. This is the press team sheet that you get when you're in as media. And literally Pochettino standing like this and he's like, you see this, this long squad? Um, well, you know, this is like under 18, under 18, under 18, under 21, under 21, under 21. We use these players. We've used these players in the Premier League. We've used them in the FA Cups. We've used them in the in uh, in the League Cup. And uh, it's a big squad, but they're using these young players. They're giving these young players opportunities. And there's a little bit of irony with Chelsea, of course, because despite, yes, they've given young players opportunities, they keep on signing, you know, players that then block the pathway of those youngsters. I think of about Amario, uh, Amari Hutchinson, for instance, who's doing really well at Ipswich, is he going to get a chance in the Chelsea first team next season? Is he going to be blocked by some of the players? I mean, Sterling has been pretty poor, but now Nani Madueke comes off the bench, scores. Is Are they going to give these opportunities to those players? That's the problem with Chelsea. But I do think that Arteta can give more opportunities. There's been games where he absolutely should. I think Amario Koja Dubri, for example, was on the bench against Wolves on the last day of last season. A nothing game... Arsenal, it was a dead rubber for Arsenal. We were winning like 3 4 nil at the time. Bring Koja Dubri on. Why haven't you brought him on? And it's a fair question. I think that people ask that very fairly about Koja Dubri, about why he wasn't brought in that game. The Lawns home game. You know, we're 5 nil up or whatever it was at half time. Was it 4 nil, 5 nil up at half time? Bring someone on. We saw it with Nuaneri at West Ham, and that was good to see. Nuaneri gets an opportunity off the bench because we were winning so heavily at that time. But there's been other opportunities where Arteta has missed them. He's not bad with youth because, look, the amount of debuts he has given, he's still given a good amount of debuts to players. He's really established a team. And ultimately, he's in a position where he has got so much pressure to progress and try and go forwards. And there's not been necessarily loads of games where you could give those players opportunities. 
but there are there have been some that he hasn't taken. The PSV away game, I don't agree with that one-one game where it was a dead rubber. Yes, but it was a really competitive fixture, and there it was a bit of a danger game. I think in terms of bringing players on, and I understood why he said afterwards it wasn't the right context. But the Wolves game at the end of last season, the Lawns home game this season, there has been opportunities where Arsenal could have given the or Arteta rather could have given those youngsters some minutes. And instead, they've gone to other players. Um, and I just think, yeah, they're, they're the times where you can you can throw a kid on and give them an amazing moment. And uh, and maybe Amara Koja Dubri would have signed a new deal now if he had played that game against Wolves. It's, it's impossible to know. Um, but there's always that speculation that you can have rightfully about that argument. Um, Mark says, same with Nuneri. It's when it's uh, garbage time, uh, give them some time. AFC Till I Die says, uh, Tom, do you think uh, Arteta's over-egging our injuries to get the likes of Partey, Tommy Martinelli, and now Big Gabby out of the international duty? No no way of me of knowing, to be honest, mate. Absolutely no way of knowing that. Have teams been a bit tactical with their injuries in the past? Absolutely. Are Arsenal learning from that? I hope so. I, I have absolutely no interest in our players playing international friendlies over the course of these this this week. If Arsenal can get them out of action, if Arsenal can, you know, use some some interesting tactics to try and avoid them playing, I'm all for that. I'm all for it. Keep them, protect them, and lock them away in, in the sober realty training centre as best you can. Uh, Jalali says, completely agree. We aren't. We just aren't in a position to try youth all the time. The pressure to win is too high right now. Um, and this is what I say. There is moments where I think the pressure is too high, but I think there are missed opportunities that we have not taken advantage of as well as maybe we could have done in certain moments. Uh, but there is also something to be said maybe about the level of quality we've got in the youth team. I think there is an emphasis that is going to be changing in the next few years. I think Arsenal are going to be looking to invest more money into their youth academy, into signing youth players. We've just brought in that Braden Clark, who was recently at Wolves. Very exciting young defender, 16, I think, years of age. He's another one, one to keep an eye out for. And Arsenal will be looking to try and snap up some of the best young talent in in the world, really, I think, for the youth academy. So the, the youth teams are going to be ones to keep an eye on. That is definitely true. Uh, Mikey says, bring them on to do what? To wait another half season for their next opportunity? Giving match day experience by watching and taking in the atmosphere is enough. I don't think it's always enough. No, Mikey, I really don't. I think that you absolutely have to give them opportunities. I think if you look at City, if you look at Liverpool, if you look at Chelsea even, they give opportunities to players. I think David Moyes is a really good example from a West Ham perspective. There's loads of pressure on West Ham, you know, not only to avoid relegation, but then to press ahead for European places and win a European trophy. And yet you look at the number of debuts that David Moyes has given at, at West Ham and it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, it's very, very impressive indeed. Um, Fouad says, I think I saw a report of Darwin Nunez withdrawing from the Uruguay team due to body soreness. So it kind of tells you where we are at at this stage of the season and why it's useless to have these friendlies. I I think that fans of European, of, of, sorry, international football will argue that there's reason why we have these friendlies ahead of that uh, international tournament. For me, I think there should be one round of friendlies after the season finishes before we're in an international tournament. Teams can organise one or max two friendlies before going into the international tournament as kind of warm-up games. There should not be an international break in the middle of this season. They finish the season a week earlier, just bring that that those weeks of those uh, domestic games down a week and remove the March international break. It would make far more sense for that to happen. It's really not conducive with protecting players or helping out, you know, to build relationships between clubs and, and nations as well. Wait till the end of the season, pick your team, have like a provisionary squad with five or six extra players in it. Then after those one or two practice friendlies before the big tournament, you can then, you know, make the decisions on the final squad. I just don't think it makes any sense to have a March international break. It's absolutely ludicrous. Um, Martin says, Fuad, I absolutely agree. It's ridiculous having international breaks at this stage of the season. There's far too much international football as it is. And says, just looked at the league table. Sure, Luton fans are happy at the moment. Indeed, that Nottingham Forest punishment dropping them into the bottom three. Uh, Waterman says, imagine Sesk was not given the opportunity or Jack. Some of these kids are good enough already. They need to be given game time. Uh, it's, it's again, it's about the balance. It's about finding when you can give them that opportunity, but at the same time, not missing opportunities that potentially do arise throughout the season that you then don't take when you could take them. Um, 
you know, there has been some questionable, you know, substitutions in some games. I think it's probably fair to say. Right. That's going to bring us to an end of today's show. Thank you. There's over a thousand of you listening on YouTube now and over 300 of you on, on, on Twitter as well. As I say, those that are listening on Twitter, please do hop over to YouTube. It really does help us out even more so than it does by listening on Twitter. Um, but thank you so much for listening as always. Have a fantastic day and drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll be, con- of course, bringing you further coverage of Arsenal over on football.london um, and looking to provide any more information we can around different topics surrounding the club. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning, of course, bright and early at 8 a.m. once again to round up all the latest news and take more of your questions as we continue to push determined, happily and encouragingly through this most difficult international break. So thank you for your listenership. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.